Let's talk a little bit about the Fed. It is preparing for the markets for the eventual reduction in its bond purchases. Eventual, 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 with the goal of avoiding a taper tantrum. Steve Leisman joins us for more on this. And I guess the biggest question is, Steve, what does eventual mean? Well, I have a bit of a timeline for you, but we do know now the Fed is in the early stages of a, call it a campaign, a ready markets for tapering. That is reducing its $120 billion in monthly asset purchases that it does to try to stimulate the economy, keep interest rates down. Comments by Fed officials in the past several weeks suggest the issue looks likely to be discussed as soon as this upcoming June meeting, and the Fed may be on track to begin asset reductions later this year or early next year. The list of those saying they believe taper talks should be held or on the agenda if the economy continues to progress include Patrick Harker of Philly, Robert Kaplan of Dallas, Fed Vice Chair for Bank Supervision Randy Quarles, and Cleveland Fed President Loretta Mester, whose comments came right here on CNBC on Friday, importantly, after the jobs report. As the economy continues to improve and we see it in the data and we get closer to our goals and the, the forward guidance we put in our statement that we're going to have, you know, discussions about our stance of policy overall, including our asset purchase programs and including our interest rates. Now, I've used this timeline for several months now. According to my reporting, it still stands despite the ups and downs in the economy on the jobs report. June, July, the Fed will discuss taper officially. Uh, that's what we think. September, November, sometime in there, they would announce a timeline for tapering. And then December, January, actually begin reducing those asset purchases. One view inside the Fed is that the taper transition occurred in 2013 because the Fed failed to adequately separate in the market's mind interest rates and raising rates and QE, or reducing quantitative easing. This time, the Fed's created this really long runway for tapering. And it's making clear that rate increases only come after this process and more substantial economic improvement. Fed officials know it could get bumpy, but they think a tantrum can be avoided this time, Becky, through this long runway process. Steve, that sounds a little bit like wishful thinking to me. I, I mean, if, if you want to admit that the bond buying is doing something, that when you take it away, it creates a difference. It may not be the, the path to higher rates immediately, right. but, you know, markets tend to react very quickly to what they sense is a change in a stance. I, I, the idea that, okay, this time is different than, than the last time with the temper ta uh, taper tantrum, good luck with that, right? So I want to throw that back at you a little bit, Becky. What, what I said is pretty well known among the Fed observers, fixed income folks. Uh, if, if, if the guys in control wouldn't put that, would put that timeline back up. If you don't oh, know or appreciate this timeline right here, that if you don't, if you don't know this timeline, then maybe you shouldn't be uh, uh, practicing fixed income investments. I think and when you look at where the 10 year is right now, when you look at where the two year is, when you look at the Fed funds futures, I, I, look, I agree with you. There's every possibility or chance that there is some sort of tantrum in the market. But that's not to say rates won't go up. Rates yields may indeed go up. It's different from a tantrum. And the idea of, look, laying this out there, being very deliberate about it, being very gradual, it seems like it's the best way, if you're going to try to avoid a tantrum, to do so. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.